It was a hectic, crazy day at Soldier Field as the Chicago Bears fall to the Miami Dolphins 32 to 35, moving their record to three and six. Miami now at six and three. But the big story is has Justin Fields arrived? Is Justin Fields him? QB1, number one in the program and number one in your hearts. Did it all come to fruition this Sunday in the lakefront? We're going to break it all down here on the Sports Cubicle Bears post game. It is the marvelous one, Dan Marver, Devin Tingle, Paul Shabari, and myself, Mike Mercado. Thank you all so much for joining us on this Sunday, wherever you're joining us. And marvelous, just so many things to get into in this game. A quick breakdown of what we saw in Soldier Field as Justin Fields goes 17 for 28, 123 yards with three passing touchdowns. But on 15 carries, 178 rushing yards and a touchdown. Those 178 yards are a NFL record to him. David Montgomery touches the ball 14 times for 36 yards. Khalil Herbert for seven rushes, 23 yards on the receiving end. Darnell Mooney with seven catches, 43 yards and a touchdown. And Cole Komet with two touchdowns. His arrival here in the Bears' future, five catches, 41 yards. Chase Claypool making his debut, a, a nice debut, and a very controversial one we'll get into in just a little bit. Two for 13, and marvelous. There's a lot of things we're going to get into when it comes to the breakdown of everything, but your initial emotion watching Justin Fields do what he did. I mean, the man showed up. The kid has arrived, has become what we're hoping may be a long, amazing career for the Bears, and a game that it felt it almost feels feels incomplete, just like the Minnesota game. Another one of those. Oh my gosh! Why we just we want to see the ending happen. So your thoughts of what we saw this this game against the Dolphins? Well, to your opening monologue, yes and yes. Yeah. <laughs> Justin Fields is, is the is the man, and, and there was never any doubt. Ask Jerry Riles, and uh, <laughs> shout out Jerry. And I mean, without Quinn and, and Smith, the defense was remarkable, particularly on fourth down. There was a major special teams blunder with a black punt that was the difference in the game, essentially. But the offense looks I, – I, I felt like the more receivers they have, the better. I mean, to, to have more targets helps Mooney, obviously. And so – and Komet, it was used in ways that he hasn't been used before as a running back. <laughs> so – they're, they are being more creative, as I had hoped, because that makes them less predictable. And uh, I liked what I saw. And this is the most excited I've ever been about a 3-6 and six team that's about to be eliminated from the playoffs. <laughs> Marvel is. I am so glad you said that. I w I'm going to tweet it out later because I want to stand on these words. But I think I need to put it in audio and video format first. This was mm -hmm. the most entertaining Bears game I've ever seen in my life. I have watched them win the NFC championship against the Saints. That was awesome. The snow at Soldier Field, watching Brian Urlacher hoist the NFC North, the Hallis Trophy. But this was one of those games where it wasn't just the outcome of this game. It was the, the, the thought, the optimism of the next five years, the next 10 years in the most popular sport, the most popular entertainment in our country. And that a franchise, a charter franchise, franchise that I've never seen win the big one, that only once, has officially won a Super Bowl. A lot of world champions. One Super Bowl. And I don't know if Justin is going to be the dude that does it. But for one afternoon, and for the last three weeks at least, no matter the outcome, it feels, it just, it feels different. And I think that that's what this game really showed is, it's not just Chicago hype. We, we've covered enough sports here. We've watched enough sports here. Chicago fans love their athletes and will put them on a sort of pedestal. Justin Fields is going to be the talk of the NFL world on Monday. And he just hasn't done that against bad teams. He's doing it against Bill Belichick. He's doing it against Dallas. And now he's doing it against Miami, who has a chance to win the Super Bowl. Now, we talked about, you mentioned the receivers. I like the fact that they have a bunch of giants at their wide receiver crew now. But I still want to make it known, make it obvious that it's still a bottom of the tier in the NFL wide receiver room. There are guys that try hard. They're not, they don't slack. They don't make, they're not, you know, they're not like a dumb, bad wide receiver room. They're just not the most talented. Then you look across the field with a 
Jalen Waddle and a Tyreek Hill. They don't even use Kasiki. That's how that's how deep they are. Mm-hmm. And imagine if Justin had a Jalen Waddle or a Tyreek Hill in that pass that that St. Brown missed. And we can get into the Chase Claypool thing. It was pass interference. I do think the Bears did have a pass interference call when they got called. I think even though he was looking at the ball, you can call that in the NFL. I understand it. But for the Bears not to have the respect of the league yet, and that's what that call was. We see it in the NBA. You see it in in, in strikes and in, in baseball. The Bears don't have the respect of the NFL. Justin Fields does. I think Fields has now gotten the respect when he's running from the NFL for NFL officiating. But mm-hmm. this Bears team has not earned, quote unquote, earned getting the call from these officiating crews. And this was a bad officiating crew to begin with. But what did you think about that pass interference that def- just derailed everything? I mean, the the if not for the fact that he was being held around the waist, yeah. Claypool, while well, he was gonna about to jump for the ball, I would have thought that it was a good play. Mm-hmm. There were two guys there, honestly, for you know to defend the pass, but the hands around the waist seems like a, a penalty to me. So, if it's not pass interference, it's holding. <laughs> so, At least. Take your, take your pick. So, uh, that was unfortunate. But, um, you know, you can't uh, can't do anything about it at this point. It's, I guess it's not reviewable. So, uh, what are you going to do? I mean, would have been nice to come out of this with a win. I mean, because they could have hit some momentum into arguably the easiest part of the remaining schedule. Because, you know, and, and I'd like to see them get one more receiver. There's some, they're already talking about next year's draft. I, I think it's time for Chicago to get another Jordan. Jordan <laughs> Addison <laughs> is, is, a, is a person they, they could get from USC. So, I mean, the more the merrier. And the defense seems to be okay with the missing parts. That was a concern. And I, and, and so, uh, they would, logically, they would the, the, the score, the number of points in this game would lead one to believe that the offense is, is, is good and the defense is, is worse. But the defense looked pretty good on fourth down particularly. So, uh I think that they're moving in the right direction, but unfortunately, um, this, a win is a win and a loss is a loss. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if, if you're the front office, right? If you're Ryan Poles, if you're Matt Eberflus, more Ryan Poles, that if you're looking at big picture, right? Let's let's talk big picture for a second, and then I actually want to get into the game. But the uh, the big picture of it is, I think if you're if you're Ryan Poles, you're sitting there saying, okay, we lost this game, but we got what we needed out of it. We saw the dudes we needed to be special, be special. Our coaching staff is doing the right stuff, whether it's Luke Getzi is getting better by better every week. This is only his ninth time calling a game. And Matt Eberflus looks like he has the respect and, and he has his guys ready to play every single week. You will take this loss, I think. If you come out with the way Fields play, he's healthy, and you can move on to next week. I do think it's unfortunate that in this game you were able to win but it was little things. You know, the defense, yeah. I think it's a great thing for Bears fandom and the organization that your best player is no longer on the defensive side. That your best player is your quarterback. I like that. That's fun. That's different. It's no longer, oh, Olin Cruz is the best player on this team. Or, mm-hmm. you know, it's Roquan was the best player. Now it's it's without a doubt this is Justin's team no matter what side of the ball it is. And I think dudes will play for him. So it would have been nice. That in the first half, you make one stop. Just one stop. And I think it changes the whole game. And then special teams, something that, again, we're going to see over year, over, the, over the year of them putting them together. A block punt for a touchdown. That is the game. Like, these are moments that great teams, teams that are going to make the playoffs, teams that are going to make runs, they don't do that. And when they do, they're, they're like Buffalo, and you lose the game against the Jets that you're not supposed to lose. So it, it's little things like that that make you lose, but you still leave the game after we do this post game, after we complain with our friends, maybe after dinner, finally we relax, watch Sunday night, some Netflix, we'll relax a little bit. And we'll be like, oh, okay, you know what? Yeah, they lost. But I will say this. Yeah. In the offseason, they're going to draft a lot of offensive players, I believe. I think they're going to spend all their money, and I don't believe all of the 110 plus. I actually think it's going to be closer to like 70, whatever, but it'll be all on offensive line. They'll draft some offensive linemen, but I think it'll be an offensive line. It's going to be the front seven. That's it. And here's the thing. If you do that, that is a recipe for success. Invest on your defense from free agency. 
and use your capital on the the draft for either special defensive players that can't miss or surrounding Justin with the most talent you can. And when you do that, I have a question for you, Marvelous, and I have it for anybody listening to us here on the Sports Cubicle with the Marvelous One, Dan Marver, Devin Single, Paul Shavari, myself, Mike Mercado. Follow us on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV or leave a comment below if you're watching this video version on YouTube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network. The Bears have the brightest future in the NFC North. I And I want to, is that true? Because Bryce Young going to Detroit might make them special. They have a lot of receivers. They, they can't stay healthy in the running back position, but they have a lot of talent there. And I like Dan Campbell, even though he'll probably get fired sooner than not. Although not after this week, after beating Green Bay, but the Bears have the brightest future in the NFC. And that's saying something with Justin Jefferson and Dalvin Cook in Minnesota. But Kirk Cousins is the quarterback there. And Aaron Rodgers was is the exception to the rule who's not proving the rule of an aging quarterback. So my question to you, the brightest future in the NFC North, is it the Chicago Bears? Yeah, well, I have three other choices. So it's not yeah. like I have making a choice out of 50. Yeah. And Kirk Cousins went back to Washington at once. So I, mean, <laughs> I mean, and and Green Bay obviously is having their problems. Losing to Detroit is not that outstanding for them. So in a four-team division, okay, I'll give it to you. <laughs> they, have the, they have the brightest future. They don't have the brightest future in the uh, NFC. Mm-hmm. They have the brightest future in, in the NFC North. I'll give you that. <laughs> Isn't that the, the step-by-step process yeah. you want, though, if you're a Bears fan, right? Like, if we're taking this series, right? Like, let's say, okay, yeah, they're, they're the brightest team in the NFC North. That doesn't guarantee you anything, but let's just say you are. That is the next step because the Bears being better than Green Bay consistently or being better than Minnesota, it's its own accomplishment and I think that is this is something I've been mentioning you know to anybody because I think it's hard for people to understand the and, and you know this better than anybody for people to understand the, op, the the excitement that Chicago Bears fans have for a quarterback like Justin Fields because they've never had a quarterback like Justin Fields and it's not just his running they've never had a quarterback who changes the game like he does and he you got to keep him honest because he'll throw the ball and we've seen that he can make a big throw. And if he had up to top tier receiving talent that you get these guys, I mean, we don't we don't know what the the floor and the ceiling are for for this dude. But I mean, for anybody who's watching us nationally, right? Like if you're a a Chargers fan coming from R- Philip Rivers to to Justin Herbert, right? Or if you're a Cowboys fan from Tony Romo to Dak Prescott and 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 Troy Aikman, and you know you just go down the list, right? Of all these other NFL teams who have had quarterbacks to explain what Bears fans are feeling right now. Uh, I I agree with that. Here's the amazing thing. Think about the last home game they had (laughs) against Washington. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to believe the the, the visual progress since Washington (laughs) in all phases. Because Washington, they look pretty hopeless. (laughs) And the New England and Dallas games gave you some indication that they were moving forward offensively. And this was a total offensive show. They did everything correctly in offense, and uh, they came up short against a team that will make the playoffs more than likely with uh, amazing <laughs> receiver cores. Speaking mm-hmm. of receiver cores, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, they're, they, they're off off the chart. Mm-hmm. So um, it, 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 to win this game would have been really nice, and it was there to be won. Thank you, Mr. Referee. And uh, they didn't, so what are you going to do? <laughs> I think, and you, we've talked about it, right? Like Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill specifically as we got to watch them. But you also see it with the Eagles. And the thing these teams have in common is not only the young quarterback, but it's quarterbacks people were questioning, right? Nobody questions Joe Burrow or or Justin Herbert the way they do Tua, or at least the way they did for Tua, Jalen Hurts, and now they're doing for Justin. Because they weren't even questioning Mac Jones and Trevor Lawrence the way they did Justin Fields. So I think these guys have in common with Tua and Hurts, they surrounded these dudes with unicorns. A.J. Brown is uh, is unbelievable. Devontae Smith is a nice second receiver. Dallas Goddard. And then you have Miles Sanders, and it's like they have a nice team. If Tua with his unicorns, it makes you start thinking, well, what if? What if? Like Kyler Murray has DeAndre Hopkins, and DeAndre Hopkins bails him out of how many mistakes? And I think that's the one thing I want to see moving forward is somebody from the receiving core bail out Justin Fields not the opposite not Justin Fields constantly having to bail you out somebody else making a play that saves the day and that's what this Bears team is still missing 
Absolutely. But uh, they still have so many potential weapons. Think about the, the fact that Montgomery wasn't used that much. So in the next game, maybe he'll be used a lot. And and so they can do a lot of different things. So, uh, you know, I, I thought that f for whatever reason, uh, Fields looked more elusive today. I mean, he, he looked like he was d uh, d down and out. He was in the grass of people. I mean, unless he had put on slippery juice or something, it, it seemed like he was he was very elusive as a runner, uh, which made me feel better because whenever he takes off, I, I'm afraid of him being. <laughs> That being his last play of the game, you know, when he gets hit. So his slide is quite interesting. I don't think any other quarterback slides quite like him. Usually, usually they do legs first. <laughs> he doesn't slide like a baseball slide. I also find that quite interesting because that makes me nervous too. But be that as it may, the, I, I believe that now there, there isn't going to be any quarterback controversy in Chicago for some time. I mean, that, so there wasn't going to be any this year because I don't think Simeon was taking over no matter what. You know, <laughs> Go no, catch. It, it wasn't like, you know, in previous, like last year where yeah. he didn't even, it wasn't the starter at the beginning of the year. But be that as it may, this is the future of the franchise, as you say. The future is a quarterback. Most, most in the, historically, it's been the middle linebacker, it seems like, mm -hmm. <laughs> in recent history. But here we've got the, the franchise quarterback, and now they have to, build the pieces to make make them you know super bowl contenders that's that's the goal obviously so i know it's weird after a loss saying these things <laughs> but if you're looking for the optimism right if you're looking look if there's enough negativity in the world and we will trust me there'll be games <laughs> where he'll play bad and there'll be games where this team just looks it's the nfl we know what's going to happen but start taking inventory around the league matthew stafford how long is he going to be around jimmy mm -hmm. g Geno Smith, that's just the, and Kylo Murray, that's just the NFC West. Tom Brady, are you worried about, uh, 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 are you worried about uh, PJ Walker? Are you worried about Sam Darnold? Are you worried about Baker Mayfield? You know, Jameis Winston, start doing inventory around mm. the, the NFC and you start feeling a little bit better. It yeah. still is going to take the front. Look at the, the team right now and the coaching staff are performing and doing their, their part of the job. They're, they're pulling their end of the rope. In a few months, this is going to fall right back on the McCaskies and, more importantly, Ryan Poles. So it's soon going to be his time. And you and I and everybody here in the sports kid are going to have a great time yeah. talking about that's going to be very fun. And we're going to have a keen eye on that. But that is something right. on the pipeline. So I'm looking. I think this is a best-case scenario for the Bears when you see them going, you know, uh, 10 for 16 from third down efficiency, one for two on fourth down, only giving up two sacks, one, both of them very late, and, you know, four penalties is a lot, but again, I didn't love the officiating in this game, which I'm not somebody who even talks about officiating. They had the <laughs> ball for 34 minutes, they 368 total yards, another 200-plus rushing day, 252 to be exact, and 116 passing yards like it is what you wanted if you're doing the checklist minus the w but even then you get to go to bed night bed tonight wake up on monday enjoy the rest of the week until next week yeah. thinking what if well what if be the optimist lions yeah. falcons jets we're six and six with green bay coming in i mean <laughs> that's it though like that's, that is what that's so, the goal yeah. yes yes it's the it's the optimism bucket it's the optimism uh, uh piggy bank every time they do something good we take an optimistic quarter and we put in the piggy bank and we try to cash in next season because yeah they should have beaten washington they should have beaten uh the giants and it changes everything but instead they're developing they're gonna have a good draft pick we'll see so, Marvelous, any final thoughts as we look forward to the next few weeks of the Chicago Bears season? I mean, you look at their schedule. They now have the Detroit Lions. They have the Falcons. They have the Jets and the Packers. So, there is, in the next four games, plenty of winnable games. They're going to lose some. There's going to be some frustration. But I think, at the very least, again, more bites at the apple to see this team develop. Well, the good news is, is that they played the game today rather than yesterday's weather. I don't know if folks saw what, what it was Here like. in Chicago, yeah. Iowa State, marvelous. Northwestern. I mean, it was unbelievable. The 70 mile per hour winds where they were, they, they were using the place kicker to be a punter to keep it in a lower trajectory. <laughs> I mean, that, that's unbelievable. And we've had really good weather for the most part and for the games here. So hopefully that will continue. Obviously, Detroit next week back home. So it'll be a fun one that we'll be covering. And I think next week, look for a Bears win and another offensive explosion. 
but we'll have to see how practice goes this week. We'll see the injury report. But I think all in all, a disappointing end to yeah. a wonderful game by the Chicago Bears offense. And you get to enjoy the rest of a Sunday, Monday, heading into the next week of this NFL slate, knowing that for one week, you had the most special quarterback in the NFL. So I think that's something like how many times does a Bears fan get to say that? But with that, we want to say thank you. Hopefully you enjoyed this Bears recap, even though the Bears fall to the Miami Dolphins in a very tough game at Soldier Field, 35 to 32, the Chicago Bears now at three and six. Let us know your thoughts. We're on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV. Make sure if you missed the show, find us on WCPT's SoundCloud. Download us there as well. Check out the video version of the show. Leave a comment. See our amazing mugs over at youtube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV. It's the Marvelous One, Dan Marvel. It's Devin Tingle. It's Paul Shavari. I'm Mike Mercado.